Welcome to the Reclaim Your Rise podcast. My name is Lauren Bongiorno, a nationally board certified health coach and founder and CEO of Risely Health, where we help people and families impacted by type 1 diabetes take ownership over their lives so that they can transform with more freedom and confidence. Everyone has a different reason to be here. You might be seeking knowledge, support, or community, but at your core, I know that you long for something deeper. You're here for transformation. And that's what the Reclaim Your Rise podcast is all about. A quick reminder before we start the show that nothing you hear on the Reclaim Your Rise podcast should be a substitute for personalized professional medical advice. Please always consult your physician or other medical professional before making any changes to your diet, insulin dosages, or healthcare plan. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to Reclaim Your Rise. Another week, another episode. I want to start off with some gratitude. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Whether this is the first episode that you're listening to of the show or this is your, I think, 77th, I appreciate you. And I especially want to say thank you to anyone who has taken some time lately to leave a review on whatever podcast app you listen to this on. Um, or rate the show. It has been so incredibly helpful in helping us grow and helping other people in the diabetes community find us when they're typing in type 1 diabetes podcasts into the app. So I um, want to say a big thank you. And also, it just feels so good reading those positive reviews to show up here for you know a year and a half now, every single Tuesday, putting out content um, to see that feedback is just really, really energizing and makes a difference in the way that I feel and the team feels. So yeah, thank you. Uh, But let's get into today's episode. It is not one that is going to be focused on how to lower your A1C or increase your time and range or tips for nailing the bolus when you're out and eating things that are, you know, more challenging. Those things are really, um, they're important and we've talked about them in tons of previous episodes. We're also going to continue to talk about different strategies and and focus on um, you know helpful things that have helped people in reclaiming their rise um, on, on the show. But there is an unequal balance of all of that that is talked about in comparison to the things that we're going to talk about today, which is mindset, uh, mindset and self-compassion. And more specifically, mindset and self-compassion for those who have a perfectionist personality type, aka the worst type of personality to have when you have type 1 diabetes. Just kidding, but not really. Because as you know, diabetes is something that we can never be perfect at. And I feel like I can say that like, you know, just kidding, not really kidding because I'm a recovering perfectionist. Um, there are many areas, not many, but there are a few, I should say, um, areas mainly work related that I am still very much like very much recovering from and actively like daily trying to get through breaking habits, um, around, you know, things that aren't serving me that have to do with my perfectionism or my idea that things have to be perfect when they're never really going to be. And so it kind of like stalls me and I can't move forward because it's like so paralyzing sometimes. However, with my diabetes, I feel like I've worked through like 98% of what used to feel like so consuming for my life. So all to say, I can very much relate to anyone listening right now who is struggling with this and their diabetes because it's it's hard, man. It's hard. And while we can do an entire episode on all different personality types and how they influence diabetes and our outcomes, because I've definitely found you know that to be true by coaching you know over 600 type ones throughout the years at Risely you know we found that personality type plays such a big role in our outcomes as T1Ds and that's why human centered care is so much more important than just the generalized education that we get um but I want to focus on perfectionists today because I feel like we can really get the short end of the stick in the type of support we get to feel better or to move forward in our lives and not be so weighed down um, by ourselves. And that's because on paper, a lot of the time we have numbers related to diabetes that look good and fine, right? Time and range. Oh, you look so great. You know, you're doing a great job. Keep it up. A1C. Oh, you're under six. That's amazing. Like, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. 
So you kind of get this like you get you get written off. And at the same time, it's on us a little bit because we get really good at hiding our struggles. We want others to think that we're doing perfect and oh wow, she's like the best diabetic or he's the best diabetic. But on the inside, the like like what that I guess like the toll it puts on us is is dealing with a lot of negative thoughts and overwhelm and anxiety and also like not knowing how to ask for help. I remember when I was dealing with this um, in my like early 20s, this was like a lot of my like college error um, and a couple years after, but when I was dealing with this, it's like I knew that I wasn't happy, but I also didn't know like who could help me. So when I would go to the doctor and I looked fine on paper, it was like, why even say anything? Because I, I know that they're not going to be able to support me in this. Um, so I kind of turned to myself and just, try, you know, got myself out of the hole. I, I still don't know how I did it on my own, but all to say, like, this is an episode that I wish that younger Lauren could listen to. And so I'm I'm hoping that this is going to reach the right people um, you know, when you, when you all need it most. So let's go into sharing just some challenges that you may relate to and experience as a T1D who is also a bit of a perfectionist. Um, so some of these things, um, you, you know, some of you may say like, oh, I relate to every single one. Others, you guys, you might say, oh, I, you know, one or two of them I can relate to. Remember that this is a spectrum. Well, remember two things. One, perfectionism is a spectrum. For example, I, there are people in my very close circle, somebody I'm thinking of who is a major perfectionist. And if like you put me next to her, people would be like, oh my gosh, Lauren is not a perfectionist at all. Right. Um, because she's, you know, so extreme in that. But if you just take me by myself, like I check off a lot of these boxes or have in the past. Um, so that's number one. Number two, a perfectionist personality, like personality is also thought like is sometimes thought to be fixed, but it's not. Like it can change. Um, example being myself, right? Like I have come maybe so far from where I was that I don't even relate so much to being, I would say like my main personality trait being, being a perfectionist. I would say like recovering perfectionist mostly um, describes describes me. But anyways, okay, so here are the, some of the things. So you might be somebody who needs to achieve to feel worthy. Um, you are rarely satisfied with where your numbers are at, or even if your number, like you are satisfied where your numbers are, you're always thinking, well, when's the next shoe going to drop? Um, you may spend a lot of time comparing yourself to others, but not only others, but like your old self or an old time or phase of your life version of yourself. If your A1C goes down, you may put a lot of pressure on yourself to keep it there. And spend time worrying about like, well, what if it goes up and what if I can't maintain this? And if your A1C does go up, even if it's slight, even if it's like 5.7 to 5.9, like you feel like a failure and you have a lot of shame around that. Um, you try to control your routine and your environment as much as possible and you don't do well with spontaneity. So if you're going on vacation, you might like bring all of your supplements and, you know, everything with you and try to plan out exactly where you're going to eat at each place in the fear of like not having control because you're out of your routine. Um, you may feel a lot of guilt around decisions especially when those decisions are ones that like you don't understand why you made them. So example, um, I'm thinking of just like another food example popped up. So let's say you ordered a salad and everybody else was having pizza and you decided that you had wanted the pizza instead of the salad because you saw everybody else having it and then your blood sugar went high. You kind of spiral into this feeling of you know, not being in control because you're like, well, why could I got the salad so I could have it? Like, why didn't I have that? Or why couldn't I, you know, have the willpower? It's a lot of that, like you didn't meet the standard or the plan. Um, and then another one is all or nothing thinking. This is something that's really common. So you're like, it's, it's a great day or it was a terrible day. Um, you know, it's like one high blood sugar can turn into screw it. You know, we'll start over tomorrow. Um, and you, you're kind of always like yo-yoing from day to day or week to week um, with that or week to even like weekend. And then lastly, you may have some like emotional burnout from never measuring up and, and never being good enough. And it could feel like really isolating, kind of what I was talking about before of like not knowing how to, you know, get out of get out of the cycle you're in or not knowing how to ask for help or just being like, is am I ever going to feel better than I feel now? 
So we talked about all those challenges. And I also, I just want to add to like with those challenges, there are elements, if you're listening to this episode and this like very much so far describes you and you feel like, oh wow, Lauren's talking to me. Like there are elements of our personality that this is, you know, great and helpful for, right? Like where this perfectionism can be helpful is it just helps us strive to be better. It helps us want to improve in our lives, in our careers, in our diabetes, in our relationships. But when it becomes not helpful is when we're constantly improving because we feel like we're not enough and we are holding ourselves to impossible standards. One more time we'll roll it back. When perfectionism is not helpful for us is when we're constantly improving because we feel like we're not enough and we are holding ourselves to impossible standards. It's so crazy that the worst I ever felt about myself, my body, my relationship to diabetes was the first time when I broke a 6.0 A1C and I had a 5.7. Like that is that moment I felt at my lowest. And it was because feeling good about myself really couldn't come from a number. I thought it did, but it had to come from a different place of truly loving myself and looking under the hood to see where I was unfulfilled in other areas of my life that I was kind of just trying to project onto, oh, the diabetes control will make me feel better. But in in reality, it wasn't that. It was was other things. Um, This is very comparable to relationships, right? Like, if you are constantly searching for somebody to make you feel, you know, whole, right? Like you hear this, everyone says this, right? Like you you have to be whole on your own and even more so, like when you are whole on your own, that is when you are going to attract in the best possible person for you because they are there to be your cheerleader and your rock and your and, and your person to – you know, just champion the dreams that you have and the person that you are. And you're not tro- attracting in somebody to come like fix you in a way or fulfill a part of you. Um, you know, we have to do that for for ourselves. So that leads us into a few mindset reframes that I want to share. I have five specifically. And, you know, listening to this episode alone hopefully is going to get you thinking, get the wheels turning, but like step two and phase two is I want you to go and journal on these things. And then step three is if you really are struggling and you've been struggling for a while, definitely come to our team, apply to coaching. We'll see if we can you know, support you in getting to where you want to be. But um, there's a lot you can do with just this like discovery phase, we'll call it. So the first one I – I, this one's really important and it goes with the idea that like sometimes the answers or the, the direction is in just like asking the right questions. And so there's a question that I, you know, have asked myself a few times along the past couple of years and, you know, different occasions where I really felt myself just like pushing, 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 pushing and, you know, to a place where it was like detrimental to me. Um, and we've also had some community Risley coaching members ask, you know, we've asked this question in like a coaching capacity and it's a lot of like a light bulb moment for them. But the question is like, what is enough? Like, what is enough? When is it going to be enough? Because we have people who, yes, come to us with high A1Cs, uh, or sorry, yeah, high A1Cs, low time and range. And they are like, I need help. I need education. I need support. I need accountability. I need to like make myself a priority. And that is definitely a large majority of the people that we serve. But there's a good 20, 25% of people who come to us with 90 to 95% time and range and A1C is below a six. And they're coming to us because they're like, this isn't sustainable. I don't feel good. I'm not happy. I'm just not like I, there, there has to be like more for me than this. And so these are the, you know, those perfectionists that we're talking about here. And to the question of like, what is enough? It's like, how far, right? Like, are, are you going to push yourself or how far do you need to go? How much further do you need to go until you are happy and until you are satisfied and until you feel enough? And the answer that a lot of people will share is kind of like, there is no point in, or like there's no data point or there's no line in when it's going to be 
enough. It's like there's, it's never going to be enough because there's always more that you can do. This episode is brought to you by Omnipod. Many people don't know this, which is why we've partnered with Omnipod to help spread the word. But did you know that if you're curious about trying the Omnipod 5 tubeless wearable system, you can do so with no commitment, no obligation, and even if your current pump is in warranty? Crazy, right? Omnipod truly wants to make it as easy as possible for you to test our new system out and see how great life can be with it. There are so many benefits, my two highlights being that the activity feature sets a temporary higher target for times where less insulin is needed, and it integrates with Dexcom G6 to automatically adjust insulin every five minutes. So if you want to get on a pump for the first time, or if you want to have more freedom without a tubed pump, you can see if you're eligible for a free trial by going to omnipod.com slash rise. Fill out the quick form and they'll do the work to check insurance coverage for you. You can also view full safety information, instructions for use, and trial terms and conditions at omnipod.com slash rise. Now, right back to the show. Without sugarcoating it, like that's a sucky way to live, feeling like you're never succeeding. It's discouraging and it causes more setbacks than it does momentum. And you also just become numb to the inability or numb to the ability, I should say, to celebrate anything. So you're constantly chasing, 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 and you may find moments of like, oh, wow, like, you know, I did it. I hit that other A1C marker, or I had, you know, a few days of 100% time in range, and that felt great. But like, then when, you know, things don't go well, or something does happen, or the A1C goes in the opposite direction, or the time in range drops to, you know, 85%, it's like this whole just smack in the face to, okay, now, you know, you're, you're not doing enough and you need to be doing better and see, this is what happens and this like negative spiral that could happen. And so while, when the first mindset reframe here is asking yourself the question, like, what is enough? The second mindset reframe I want you to make that is almost like part B of number one is to create a line for yourself of what is enough, right? Like create that line and it needs to be of realistic expectations for yourself that include standards that are fluid. What does this mean? So with diabetes, we know that there cannot be perfection. So for our what is enough question, we almost have to have our what is enough line in the sand be something that includes the tough days. For example, is 90% time and range all day every day for the rest of your life realistic? No. That answer is no, right? Things are going to happen. We don't have to list them, but, you know, pump site failures, getting sick, somebody in your family dying, and you just being a human and wanting to cry in your bed and have cheese doodles. I don't know. But like it, life is going to happen. You can't be perfect. It's not going to happen. And so that's where the fluidity comes from, right? The the knowledge that life is going to ebb and flow. And so if you hold the standard of yourself all the time, unrealistically, you're always going to be letting yourself down. So what if you changed it? Like what if you just changed the line where it's kind of like, you know, I'm thinking of another example, but sometimes Um, in the diabetic health journal that we have, you can get it on Amazon if you, you know, don't already have a copy of it, but, um, there's, you know, some people who will set goals of, I want to do the diabetic health journal, you know, every single day for all three months straight that the journal, you know, has. And it's like, well, are, let's say you miss a day or like, let's say, let's say you miss a few days. Like, are you still going to feel six, are you going to feel successful? Like, no, because the goal you set was I'm going to fill out every single day. And for a perfectionist, like that's not good enough. Right. But what if you set the goal to be, you know what, I'm going to set it to do it three days a week. And then anything else other than that is just bonus cherry on top, right? It's a perspective shift, but what it allows you to do is it allows you to put less pressure on yourself. Um, it makes the lower time and range days or the, you know, just off diabetes days less stressful because you know that overall in your standards that you've created for yourself and in your line for, in the sand, there is room for that. There's already baked in room for that to happen. It's almost like when you're, I have to actually learn, <laughs> learn how to do this better, but I'm trying to, when you are trying to get to the airport, if you just put in to your, you know, like Waze or Google Maps, okay, how long does it take to the airport? And it says an hour and you have to be there two hours before and you leave three, you know, two hours before you have to be at the airport, it takes an hour to get there. So it's like, if you leave exactly three hours on the dot, like 
that is, that's cutting it close. Like you're not leaving any room for error. And you know that there's a chance that there might be some traffic things that come up. There might be things that, you know, you just are out of your control that delay it. And so in order to not create stress on yourself and pressure, what if you left, you know, an extra half an hour early? Um, so it's three and a half hours before you need to be at the airport, right? Like there, what can you, what can you do in that, you know, in that instance, in that parallel for your diabetes? Um, and then also, I love this one, but like you'd be able to just be more proud and recognize that the work that you've done, rec- recognize the work it's take it's taken to get to the place you are, which is enough, right? Like it is enough. So, so far we have ask yourself the question, what is enough? See what comes up for you. Number two, draw a line in the sand of realistic expectations for yourself and make the standards fluid. I've talked about this before, but it's like maybe you your expectations for yourself in your normal routine is like, I don't know, um, 75% time in range or 80% time in range. And then maybe when you're on vacation, your expectations for yourself are like 65 to 75% time in range. Like you don't want to drop below there. And that's where I think it gets sticky too is like, or oh, it's that um, you're you're distinguishing what is what are just like standards and expectations that I have for myself that are healthy versus when am I pushing myself to you know always hit these standards that are just like impossible to like meet um, because truth is like the opposite of everything we're talking right now is just being like you know I don't want to say lazy but like not caring and sitting at you know just high blood sugar or roller coaster blood sugars all day, every day. And like, that doesn't feel good. And so we don't want to swing to the opposite side. We just want to, you know, lean more into, um, how do we, how do we take kind of, I guess, what our personality is lean into the things that, you know, are helpful. And then for the areas that they're not helpful work to reframe them. So let's move on to number three. Number three is, Oh, this one's a good one. Okay. What are you avoiding in your life? And where do you feel out of control or not fulfilled? There is so much to be said around relationships, career, hobbies, friendships, alone time, self-love, happiness, like all of these other things are part of our health. And diabetes is not just at the center, right? Like there's so much more to what it takes to feel healthy and to feel happy and to feel, I don't want to say like in control of your life, but yeah, to just feel like you are in the driver's seat. And oftentimes we don't put as much weight on those things. And so we think like, um, you know, it can't be that it has to be just my, you know, my, my routine is off or my food or my, my numbers have been all over the place. And it's like, we're projecting it onto the wrong area. So what I, what I would invite you to do is to really journal on these other areas of your life, maybe even rate them zero through 10, um, and get curious around like areas of your life, maybe that you're not happy, you're not satisfied in things that you feel like you don't have control over and, operate from the standpoint that you actually do have more influence than you think you do and start focusing on like filling up your bucket in those areas and maybe the diabetes piece will just kind of like you know nothing is going to change with maybe your numbers but and maybe it'll even drop a little bit like your time and range for like for example but you are going to feel happier and healthier because you're like holistically everything in your life is just overall elevated. Um, That one helps a lot of people. I can even think of, you know, examples of people who during COVID, um, you know, were really, really isolated and that, that isolation and not having, I mean, we were all isolated, right? That was not a very specific example, but like um, somebody who let's say just moved to like a new town and they really like were away from their family and their friends and didn't have anybody and they, you know, just put all their time and energy into being perfect with their exercise and perfection with their blood sugars and their food. And then they went back into the, into the real world afterwards and they found it really, really difficult because it's like, okay, like I'm just so imbalanced in like what, like what should my life look like and what, are, what does the balance need to, need to be? So um, there's some food for thought there. Uh, number four is to look at outcomes and life as non-binary. So um, limit looking at, at it in terms of good or bad or in routine or out of routine. 
um, comes back to that fluidity, but mainly curiosity over judgment. So when we have that high blood sugar number or that bad low in the middle of the night, we're not judging ourselves. We're not failures. We're not, you know, uh, doing it ruin anything. It just, it is what it is. And it's kind of like, okay, so what? So what? So what? It was a moment in time and let's get curious about why it happened because that's the only thing that we really can do that's positive and can move us forward and let's be kind to ourselves. So that's number four. And then the last one, number five, is to ask yourself, what would it look like if this were easy? I say this all the time. I know that it annoys people. I get it. But my diabetes at the current state that it is right now, it might not feel like this in a year or two years. Who knows? But right now, my diabetes feels easy to manage. I, yes, you know, I, I, I've i worked a lot of years to know my patterns and to, um, you know, understand my, my, my roadblocks and get past them and all of that. Like I've done the work and that's why it's easy, but like, that doesn't mean that you can't also do that. Right. I'm no different than you. I, I, I was in the deepest of darkest holes for like six years years I feel like on my own at, at that point of like my late teens to to mid 20s and you can get out of it. So we're taught that we need to suffer for results. We need in order to have a you know a, a healthy relationship with diabetes and to you know get past our roadblocks and to feel in harmony and aligned and and all these things and to not feel limited by it that it has to be hard. It has to be keto. It has to be the Bernstein diet it has to be a restriction. It has to be routine and rigidity. And it, it, it doesn't like it really doesn't. And so asking yourself, like, what would it look like if this were easy? If I wasn't putting this much pressure on myself, if I was letting go, that's scary for people who are perfectionists because we want to know what the outcome is always going to be. And so it also takes a little bit of like non-attachment to the outcome, kind of closing your eyes, jumping a little bit. But you know, remember nothing changes if nothing changes. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. So if you're having a hard time with how you're feeling right now with your diabetes, it's like, you know that if you just continue on this path, you know what tomorrow is going to bring. You know what next week's going to bring, next month, next year, 10 years from now, it's going to be the same thing, the same feeling. And so you need to do something different. And in order to do something different, you have to take a chance where, and chances and risk can lead to great upside. They also can lead to failure, right? And downside. But the beauty of that is, is if with that uncertainty and you don't, you know what's coming, if it's great upside, great, you figured it out. You're on the other side and your life is so much better. And if it's a downside, okay, all right, you learned something about yourself. That path doesn't work either. So let's close that door and let's open up another one. So, oh, okay. We're at the end here. You know, undoubtedly, your personality type plays a big role in how you not only relate to your diabetes, but where your strengths lie around your diabetes and also where your blind spots and your roadblocks are. And just anchoring into these five mindset reframes can help you discover really, you know, maybe things that you've kind of been burying or not wanting to give attention to or not admitting that it's been a barrier for you in living a life with more freedom and peace of mind uh, with diabetes. So um, I can promise you those people that I, uh, you know, shared earlier who come into Risely with like 90% time and range and they're, and they're not happy, they leave the program sometimes with like 85% time and range, right? But they have gained from that 5% decrease so much more energy, so much more zest for life, so much just excitement and happiness and joy of, of the work that they've put in and so much less time fixating on diabetes and guilt and regret and shame. So life's a trade-off and you just got to find where, where that balance lies for you. So we're going to wrap this up here. Thank you everyone for showing up this week for yourselves, for your future selves as well. Um, I'm here as always to support you and helping you reclaim your rise. And so is the community. You are not alone. Um, but leave a review if you have not yet. And we'll see you here next week. Same time, same place. See you later, guys. Bye. Thank you so much for being here with me today and listening to this episode of Reclaim Your Rise. To let us know that the episodes we're putting out are impactful and to help us get our street cred up and let everyone else know that this is something worthy of their time to listen to, please leave a rating and review on our Apple podcast, send the show to other people impacted by T1D or maybe even your doctor, and share it on social media tagging at Risely Health and at Lauren underscore Bongiorno. 
New episodes of Reclaim Your Rise come out every single Tuesday, so make sure you are subscribed to the podcast so that you never miss a beat. Thanks again for listening, and as always, remember, diabetes is a challenge that we did not choose, but one that we can rise above.